Hey guys, <clears throat> one of the drawbacks about plowing snow is that, like last night this was four inches of snow. You can see on the wood here there's still two inches left and there's about an inch on the ground. Now normally I wouldn't plow this, I would say hey, you know, this is going to melt, sort of like what you see there in the driveway. The problem is on my neighbor's driveway, the long driveway, it's 1500 feet long, I wasn't going to plow it today. But if I don't plow it, tonight it's supposed to be um, cold, which means that everything's going to freeze. So if two people drive up there and back, then I've got the ruts to contend with. And if they freeze solid, that makes things twice as hard to deal with. So I'm going to have to go plow that. I'm going to take you with me for that. Okay, so I was just building a fire in the house to keep things warm while I'm working. You can see that it's a mess. Here, the road is a muddy mess. Uh, there's stone on this road, but like it's just muddy because they're using a serrated blade on their grater, and it chews up the stone and makes dust, and dust gets water, and it makes mud. So there's not much you can do about it, but anyway, that's where we're at at the moment. Um, usually the road wouldn't be plowed by now, because of the, if the township was doing it. But the uh, gas well guys are pretty much on the ball as far as keeping the road clean for their trucks. So the driveway I want to do is right down here on the left. And uh, like I say, it wouldn't be a big deal if uh, nobody would drive up here. But I know that somebody's gonna drive up here and make all kinds of ruts that are gonna make it harder for me to plow. So I'm going to plow it now. I don't know if you can see that over there or not, but it's mud. The problem, like I say, is that tonight it's supposed to freeze. So whatever's here right now will freeze, and then I won't be able to plow it if somebody drives up here. And even though I can tell nobody drove up here today yet, it doesn't mean that they won't. So normally I'd let this go because it looks like it's going to thaw. As we get up here further, it's going to be uh, thicker snow where the sun doesn't hit it or where it doesn't really warm up. But it's just part of the thing about plowing. And then, you know, sometimes what the people don't understand is I'll send them a bill. and um, Or even if I charge them for the whole season, they don't understand that it's extra work for me. Look at the turkey up there. if I got them. Probably didn't get them. There were turkey up at the end of the road there. Anyway, um, what they don't understand is I'm plowing this, even though it's not a sufficient snow, just to help me on the next pass. So I made the one pass up and I'm going to make one pass back down. You can see how um, thin the snow is. There's hardly anything there to push. But like I say, if somebody drives up here today, and almost every day they do, and they make ruts all over the place, that ruts make it harder for me to plow the next day. And we're supposed to get six inches of snow tonight. I'd rather have these stones that I have picked up all over the place that I give me some traction, rather than to have the ice underneath, you know, where I'm going to be plowing. It's a shame that these water puddles are here. This wasn't like this before the gas guys came and ruined this driveway. Guys, I want to thank you for all your comments on my video last night. I really appreciate it. It's nice to know that us older folks are hanging in there together and that there's some young ones also joining our group which is uh, always nice to know not that we're anything special it's just that you know after you've lived a little bit on this earth and have done more than one thing you tend to know how to do stuff and you know whether they want to learn or go at it the hard way doesn't really matter to me but it's always nice if somebody tells you something Boy, this thing is really hard on the truck. I hate this, but what are you going to do? That's what it looks like in behind me. I'm going to 
if I got a good picture of that or not. I'm not gonna do that driveway. Normally I would, but it's, I'm just making a mess here, so I just wanna flatten it out. And that, that driveway, if I have to go up there and it's icy, uh, I'll still be able to get up it. the road here and lose it in the woods. Of course, now that they got that water pipe there, I guess I'm just going to have to get a little bit close to it. Uh, it's always something. try to let the weight of the truck do the plowing rather than the transmission. I don't want to have to put another one in. Well, it's not perfect, but it's better than it was. And now I don't have to really worry about anybody driving on it. I gotta get a set of windshield wipers. So, I have a... This is one smoke alarm here. This is an office room that uh, is going to be part of... It's part of the house. I have a load of red oak there. There's a little bit of molding land on top, but most of that's red oak underneath there. That's I was drying it up here, and it's not the best conditions for drying because it actually puts too much moisture in the house, which wasn't good. But anyway, um, the other one is right there. That's in the ceiling of this room that I'm in here. Uh, it's a living room and there's a coal stove there, but the stove is about 20 feet away from where that thing is. You know, it's not directly above it. And then there's one in each of the bedrooms, okay, a smoke alarm, and then there's one in the dining room here, which is actually off of the kitchen. So that, um, I, I feel that they're the best spots to have put them for the flow of air that goes to the house, but we'll see. Anyway, um, that's what I'll be doing today, working on this. I didn't get my batteries yet. Um, I don't know if FedEx will be bringing them today or what, but I'd like to have them. I'm, ta I'm talking about the batteries for the camera in case you're not knowing what I mean. So guys, this is the brand of smoke alarm. BRK first alert it says. Hardwired smoke alarm with battery backup. Okay, so the alarm in the box looks like this. Comes with a pigtail that you wire into your to your wiring, and then you just plug this in the back of the um, smoke alarm. Screw it up into the bracket that's up there. Now, just to give you an idea, what you want to do is I put the bracket up first and then do the wiring and stuff and then I'll wire the alarm to that. And that red wire is the one that's going to be the interconnect then. So, uh, the nice thing they have in the... Um, I, I've seen these before. There's like a little hairnet for um, a Ubangi, I suppose. But anyway, what you do with that is because you're working with, you know, a lot of dust in the house yet and all, you put them over the smoke alarm or keep the dust from getting into them until they're ready to be used. I also leave the, um, there's a, a plastic strip in here that keeps the battery from making contact. All you do is pull this out of here later. I use that, I'll leave that in there because I'm not concerned about the smoke alarm or a fire in the house while nobody's living here. 
and I'm not sure who's going to live in here at this point. So the thing is, is you just pull this out and it'll activate the smoke alarm. And there's a test button on there and stuff. So we'll see how they all work once we get them together. See what it sounds like. It'll be pretty noisy in here with this open floor plan. Okay, guys. So I'm going to test this. The breaker for the smoke alarm is that one. So we're going to do a test here. Come on. Can't push that with the broom handle. Holy crap. That'll wake the dead. I'm just pushing each one to make sure that each one is sounding. I can see the green light to it. Just push, uh, pushing each one to make sure that it's sounding. Every now and then, I don't know if you heard that, you'll hear a chirp because it's telling me the battery's dead because they're not feeling the battery. That's what's going on. But they're all working. So, that's one more thing done. Uh, guys, I brought a thermometer up here. I wanted you to. The temperature up here is seven. Uh, what is that? Sixty-eight, and you can see the that stove is fairly small. We've got a lot of rooms up here to heat, and it's doing a good job. I mean, sixty-eight degrees for a little stove like that. There won't be much of a backup need for electric. One of the other things about these uh, smoke alarms, guys, is um, they don't like what they call a noisy circuit. And a noisy circuit is something like a, um, if you put a welder, if you have a circuit on it with a welder on it or a, uh, uh, some sort of different appliances, a generator circuit is definitely a noisy circuit and that's all that we have here. Okay guys, so that's the end of the day. It's around 4 o'clock or so. It's a lot later than that, I guess, because of the winter sun. Anyway, we, you can see we didn't lose a whole lot of snow. There's still that inch and a half or two inches left. And like I say, it's supposed to snow tonight. Six inches they're calling for. But, um gonna have to get colder if we're gonna get six inches because we still got water dripping off the edges of the roof. Have a good one guys. Thanks for watching.